Welcome back. I'm here today with Steve Tesla. He's the Executive Vice President of California Bank of Commerce. Steve, welcome to today's show. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here. Good to see you. So, Steve, for the listeners, we've known each other for a while, and uh, but but can you give us your background of what led you up to where you're at today? Sure. Um, I, like you, started in the public accounting profession many, many, many years ago. I, I, I hate to say how long it's been because it's uh, it's been decades, but uh, started as it was interesting i before i got into public accounting i had a desire and passion to be um, a professional racquetball player and so for i was pursuing a career if you will as a professional athlete although i never i never was that good it was more 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 a figment of my imagination than, than true reality but i thought it's something i would pursue and so i was members of an athletic club in san francisco which, which is where i grew up and at once I realized that uh, the opportunity to pursue my dream probably wasn't going to be a reality because I just wasn't that, as good as I, as the rest of the country was, I happened to um, know a gentleman at the club who was a certified public accountant, and I had gotten a degree in accounting in college, and I t- started speaking to him about opportunities in public accounting. And so he was kind enough to take me aside and go through the telephone directory when there were still the yellow pages and kind of led me through the accounting firms that he thought I should approach about becoming a tax intern. And so he was very kind and said, I wouldn't talk to them. I would talk to this firm. I would talk to this firm. And, and lo and behold, uh, following his advice, I ended up um, securing a tax internship position with a, a large CPA firm, the largest actually at the time on the Western United States, it was called John F. Forbes and Company, which is no longer in existence. It actually merged into uh, Maine Herdman, which merged into Pete Marwich, which, which, we, which became KPMG. So um, that's I started my career in public accounting, thanks to Jim, and uh, was in it for about seven years. And it was a great opportunity to really learn about business and to understand businesses, many different industries. And it led me to a realization that there was an underserved segment of the business population, and that was primarily small to medium-sized businesses. And I eventually migrated my public accounting career into um, a firm called Laventhal & Horwath, which had uh, a small business advisory group. And I really enjoyed Enjoyed the uh, enjoyed that element of it. Um, enjoyed dealing with privately family and closely held entrepreneur uh, businesses and, and the entrepreneurs behind those businesses. And it, it was an opportunity to to really understand and really develop relationships with individuals because I'm. My career has always been focused on developing relationships, and I feel like developing relationships is really the essence of business. Um, until you become very, very, very large, when you feel more like a vendor than a than than a, than, a, than something else. But a lot of the individuals and a lot of companies that we deal with and I've dealt with in the past have always valued that relationship aspect of business. And so, I, when I was in public accounting, I, I interfaced with um, many, many bankers because um, for a lot of the companies that we had as clients, their primary capital source was the bank. And there was always a bit of a chicken and egg relationship between the public accounting firm and the bank and that um, for the bank to renew a company's revolving line of credit, it was often predicated on the public accounting firm um, issuing the financial statements. And the public accounting firm wouldn't necessarily issue the financial statements until they knew that the, the bank was going to renew the line of credit. So I got to know many, many bankers over, over, over my years in public accounting. And I, I'd reached a point... Um, in my career in public accounting, trying to sort of a crossroads and deciding, did I want to continue this down this path, or was there something else that uh, I felt was better aligned with where my skills and where my passion was? And I was really very focused on sales and marketing. And so I approached the managing partner of the firm that I was with at the time and, and sat down with, his name was was Bob, and I sat down with Bob in his office and said, Bob, here's what I'd really like to do. I, I, I appreciate the fact that um, the firm has, used, has, has partners as the primary revenue generators for business, but I said, you know, there could be real value in having someone that's 
truly dedicated to doing it on a full-time basis. And he thought about it and looked at me and said, Steve, I'm sorry, but this isn't the way we generate business at the firm. And so it, it caused me to pause and think about where I was and, and what I wanted to do. And I really enjoyed meeting people, developing relationships, and it paused it was a it was a time for pause and reflection and i had an opportunity i thought to leverage that skill and so i started talking to some of my colleagues in banking who i'd interfaced with over the years and i was interested in learning something some new skills and and acquiring some new skill set but that leveraged my existing skill set from public accounting and also leveraged the business development and marketing skill set and so I decided that I would leave public accounting after about seven years, and I convinced someone at Wells Fargo Bank to hire me. And I, the reason, one of the reasons I approached Wells Fargo was because they had a very forward-looking sales culture for banks and, and, and for bank for financial services in general. And so I convinced an individual to give me a job at the uh, main office of, the, of Wells Fargo in San Francisco, which is where I'm from, and, and was living at the time. And... Um, I, I, I was diligent, worked hard. I had a lot to learn. I, I knew a lot about, you know, I knew a lot about financial statements and understanding financial statements, but I didn't know a lot about banking. And so they were kind enough to put me through a training program. And after a year or so at the bank, in, in their business bank, um, I was approached by one of the members of the sales team at Wells Fargo in their commercial banking group. And they uh, asked me if, if I would be interested in joining their group. They said, gee, I see you here until at seven o'clock at night and, and at six and seven o'clock in the morning and you, might, you, might, you seem to work hard and seem diligent and you seem to be, and seem to be effective at what you do. And so that's really where I wanted to be because when I started at Wells Fargo, I started with smaller business and I wanted to get into, I wanted to get into a group that had slightly larger businesses. And so it was a, so it was a great opportunity for me to step up. And uh, Steve, I need to take a quick break. No problem. Uh, but I'm visiting here today with Steve Tesler. He is Executive Vice President of California Bank of Commerce. And we'll be right back after these messages. can't take your wealth with you, spend time with your family. Welcome back. I'm busy here today with Steve Tesler. He's the Executive Vice President of California Bank of Commerce. And Steve, in the first segment, we talked about, you know, you started your foundation, the career as a CPA. And as people often do, they reflect back and say, is this really what I want to be doing? And so you, uh, after some pondering and thought, moved over into the banking sector. Now, today you're with a different bank. Uh, how, did, how did you go through the transition of moving out from Wells Fargo to California Bank of Commerce? Wells Fargo is a great place to learn. You know, we, we all need to learn about an industry that we're not familiar with or a profession we're not familiar with by starting with a larger company and got some great experience. Um, but I, I reached a point in, in my um, evolution where I, I enjoyed working with the type of clients that Wells Fargo had. What, what I didn't enjoy as much was just the large company element of it. And, and I really wanted to do something that was, I felt was more entrepreneurial and more in alignment with the clients that, that I that served and the clients I knew. And it so happened that I was working in downtown local for Wells Fargo and about a half a block away was a small regional bank called California Bank of Commerce. And I stopped in there one day to say hello to some people that I, I had known there and who, who actually came, had come from Wells Fargo because California Bank of Commerce had, had stumbled a bit in the early 90s and was in the midst of a turnaround. And so part of that turnaround involved bringing in some new management. And that new management was two senior executives from Wells Fargo. So I stopped in one day, it was only half a block away, just to see what was happening at California Bank of Commerce. And that led to, uh, to a series of discussions with um, Herb and John, and we ended up um, striking a deal. They were kind enough to make me an offer to, to, to help them grow the bank. 
Um, they had laid the foundation for growth and wanted to augment that by hiring some key people to help propel the growth. And that was an opportunity I thought about for 24 hours, and especially given the fact they they offered me a small equity position in the bank. And so I st- spoke with my wife about it, and uh, I said, this is going to be ultimately a lot more fun than what I'm currently doing. Not that I didn't enjoy what I was doing, but I think this is going to be even more fun. A little riskier, but more fun. So I decided that in early 95 to join California Bank of Commerce. And California Bank of Commerce was a, a great platform for me and, and, a, and a bunch of other individuals who we all, we all met at California Bank of Commerce, I mean at Civic Bank of Commerce, and it was a great place to launch from. And Civic Bank, we ultimately grew Civic Bank. We doubled the size of the bank in about seven years and sold the bank in uh, March of 2002 to City National Bank out of uh, Southern California. So it, it was a good event. It, w- it allowed the bank to um, to move to its next next iteration, if you will. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as well as some of us had hoped. So it was an opportunity to move on from there after about a year and a half with, with City National. And I, I happened to join uh, a bank in Danville called Diablo Valley Bank, which had started up recently. Um, I don't know if you know this, but there weren't a lot of bank formations between the period of, uh, I just looked up some statistics, between two, 1990 and 2008, there were um, over 2,000 new banks formed. It was wow. about 100 a year. From 2009 to 2013, only seven new banks formed in the entire United States. And that's uh, due to a number of reasons, low interest rates, the, the economic crisis, uh, Dodd-Frank regulation. There was a bunch of things that happened, but there were only seven new banks formed, and I happened to be part of one of them, which was the Diablo Valley Bank. So Diablo Valley Bank was, uh, honestly, it was a grow it and sell it strategy by the two founders, and Diablo Valley Bank sold in June of 2007 to Heritage Bank of Commerce, which is a local bank in San Jose. So during that time, um, I had an opportunity to follow the progression of California Bank of Commerce, very similar to Civic Bank of Commerce. And it turns out that a number of former Civic colleagues were part or were thinking about becoming part of California Bank of Commerce. So as I'm sure you know, Alan, you know, who you work with makes all the difference in the world and you have to enjoy who you work with. And a number of us had a great experience at Civic Bank and an op- the opportunity to recreate Civic Bank in California Bank of Commerce was appealing and attractive. And the timing of the sale of uh, Diablo Valley Bank to Heritage Bank was a good one because Civic Bank or California Bank of Commerce opened for business in July of 2007. And um, Diablo Valley Bank completed its sale in June of 2007. So the, the thought of, if you will, getting the, old bang, getting the old band back together again was a very compelling one and a very attractive one, and that's what happened. So, Civic, so California Bank of Commerce was formed with pods of two people, a pod from Civic Bank of Commerce and a pod from Mechanics Bank. And so it was a Civic Bank pod that I was the most familiar with and w- which was the most attractive to me. And so that's how we. That's how I ended up at California Bank of Commerce today, and and we're in, we're now ten years. We had California Bank of Commerce had its tenth birthday, July seventeenth, two thousand and seventeen, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. You know, Steve, I need. I'm, I'm up against the break again. No problem. Uh, I'm visiting here today with Steve Tesla. He's the executive vice president, of California Bank of Commerce. And after we get back, I want I want to walk through what happened when the tarp came in the two thousand eight. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages. I love fishing, you know, with my family. I think it would be easier to use a net. It was so much fun. The times when we are together, it makes it all all the more worth it. Having Dad teach them how to, like, cast a fly rod and... As long as we're doing stuff together, we're having fun. Some people see a father and a son fishing together, while others see a succession plan. Welcome back. I'm busy here today with Steve Tesla. He's the executive vice president of California Bank of Commerce. And, and Steve, in the, uh, the previous segment, you were talking about how California Bank of Commerce launched in July of 2007. Well, a year later, the, the, everything got turned upside down in this industry. And here you were, a new, a, a new startup, uh, trying to get your ground uh, you know, settled in. And how did you guys manage that? It's interesting because we get asked this question a lot. Um, 
had we tried to raise capital for the bank six months later, it, it probably wouldn't have happened. So it was fortunate that we raised our capital in May of 2007 and launched the bank in July. And one of the benefits that we had, there were several benefits that we, that we were able to capitalize on. The first one was that we started with an empty balance sheet. We didn't have any assets when we launched the bank. So it wasn't as though we had a portfolio of loans or relationships that we had originated three to five years later that now all of a sudden, because of the economic situation, we're going to uh, all of a sudden have problems. So we, we, we didn't have to worry about that. Uh, second is is the strategy. We were it's very we are we're a hundred percent business bank. Um, two of the sectors that were probably most adversely affected during the 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 economic crisis were residential real estate, uh, builders and developers. I mean, certainly business as a general what, what was infected. Business in general was it was impacted, but there were certain sectors that got impacted much harder than others. Um, we're not our we're not a residential real estate lender. We still to and even today, we are not. That, that's not our, our focus is commercial banking. So we, we, so we missed that bullet. We, we don't bank many builders and developers. So we missed that bullet, um, which saved us, which helped, which helped keep, keep us alive. But more importantly, we had some very deep relationships with previous clients. And we were able to port them over to the, to the new bank. Um, we were also able to acquire new clients that were for lack of a better term, were, you know, a baby being thrown out with the bathwater. Maybe they were, their existing bank was experienced, as many banks were, they were experiencing some challenges. And so in some cases, all of their customers, all of their clients felt some pressure from what was happening into the banking sector. And so it was an opportunity for those clients that felt pressure, felt like they needed to, to felt like it was undue and that, they, that the stress wasn't necessary and that they had an opportunity to move to a new bank like ours. On the one hand, it was we were a young bank. We were a startup. We didn't make money for the first three years, so we had to convince. You know, clients had to trust us, and so there was there was an element of um, of selling, if you will, with with some new clients that this was the right place for them to be. Everything sounded great. It was the right story. It was the right um, right focus. Everything was 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 perfect for them. Except you know, you've only been around two years. How do I know you're, you're going to be here three more years? And so the, there was an element of there was there was that element which which we had to overcome, which we were which we're very I wouldn't say we're we're very persuasive, but we're very genuine about what we tell people. Now, how and many offices today does the bank have? Today, the bank has six offices. Um, in started in Lafayette, expanded to Oakland, and now have offices in in addition to those two offices in Fremont, San Jose, and Walnut Creek. We actually have two offices in San Jose. Now, as executive vice president, what is your day-to-day responsibilities within the bank? Oh, it varies, but it, a, a lot of it is focused on developing strategies for the growth of the bank, but also executing those strategies and looking for new opportunities with um, clients in our target industries and our target markets. Um, so and I, I spend a, a lot of time um, trying to develop new relationships for the bank, but also working with some existing relationships or existing relationship managers to cultivate those. Because as I think you know, the best source of business is refer, our referrals from your existing clients. So we have to make sure that we nurture those relationships to the best extent that we can. But it's also looking at new opportunities, new markets, new clients, um, th- niches, specialties, opportunities to demonstrate how we're different and not just a vanilla commercial bank. And then how would you differentiate yourself from the c- competition? You know, California Bank of Commerce is, is really predicated on relationships. I know that tends to be an overused term in banking, and I wish it wasn't, uh, I wish they hadn't lost some of its luster, but I think to a certain extent it has. But we really spend time getting to know our clients because we know that business is cyclical it does not always go up and it does not go straight down but it, it goes in cycles and we what we've found is that there are a lot of people who are your friends when business is going well the question is who are your friends when business isn't going so well and so so if if you have a, a deeper understanding of what your clients what their what their business is about 
and what their strengths and weaknesses are, you can be a better advocate for them and you can be better and more supportive of them during periods of um, cyclical downtimes or during periods of, during a slow time um, or when some um, unforeseen event happens and you're not caught by surprise. And that's one thing that this bank does extremely well is that because we know our clients well, we can ride through challenging, difficult times with them. And we've, we've have demonstrated examples of that over and over again of being able to do that. That is one of the key differences between California Bank of Commerce and a lot of other banks. And, and the, other, the other key difference is just the execution factor. We can get things done quickly. Now, Steve, we're out of time today, but I really appreciate having you on this show. I've been visiting with Steve Tesler. He's the Executive Vice President of California Bank of Commerce. And quickly for the listeners, if someone wanted to reach out to you, how would they go about contacting you? Yeah, they can, you can reach me at area code 510-499-9509 and, or by, via email at stesler at bankcbc.com or through our website, which is californiabankofcommerce.com. Thanks for being on today's show. Alan, thanks for having me.